In our last video on work and energy, we're going to go over power. Power is the rate at which work is done or energy is transferred. We're going to look at power once in this video when we're looking at work, and we're going to look at power again in later videos when we're looking at batteries and circuits doing work. So the equation for power is work divided by time, which tells us what the units of power is gonna be that the units is work, which we know the unit is joule, and time we know is a second. Now, first of all, a joule per second, you should still be able to figure out what these units are in terms of the basic SI units. It is a kilogram meter squared per second cubed. And this unit is called a watt. So essentially, the unit of power is the watt denoted by capital W. We can use this equation to calculate the power in a number of situations. Sometimes when you're dealing with problems, they don't give you the work in time. They'll actually give you the force and the velocity and ask you to calculate the power. This works if your object is going under constant linear motion. So it's moving in a straight line with the same speed. And the reason why this works is because work is FD cosine theta. But if your object is moving linearly, then the force and the displacement are in the same direction. So cosine theta is one. So you just have force times displacement over time and displacement over time is velocity. So just another equation to calculate the power, force times velocity. Okay, so to look at how these equations work, let's look at a couple examples. In the first one, we want to know what is the power of a machine that lifts a 100 kilogram box five meters upward in 10 seconds. All right, so to calculate this, first we can draw the situation. We have a box that is 100 kilograms and it's being lifted up with the applied force of the machine that's doing the work. So if we want to calculate the power, power is equal to work over time. Work, we know, is equal to F D cosine theta divided by time. So the force here is the force applied, and this force that the machine has to apply has to be equal to the weight of the box, mg, and the displacement, it's lifting it up five meters, but let's keep it as d for now before we plug in the numbers. And the angle here, the applied force is up, the displacement is also up, they're in the same direction, so theta is zero degrees, divided by the time which we do know the value. So now let's go ahead and plug in the numbers. This will give us the mass of 100, gravity which is 10, displacement which is five meters, cosine zero is equal to one, divided by the time of 10 seconds. So conveniently, the tens cancel out, so this is going to leave us with 500 watts. That must be the power of the machine while it is lifting the box up. Okay, let's take a look at another example here. If a car engine has to provide a force of 6,000 newtons to maintain a speed of 15 meters per second up an incline, what is the power of the engine? All right, so this is a situation where we don't have any time component. We're not given work, but we're given force and velocity. So we can calculate this using our other equation. Power is equal to force times velocity. The force here is 6,000 newtons. The velocity is 15 meters per second. So this is gonna give us an answer of 90,000 watts. So very large power that the car must supply in order to maintain this speed while going up the incline. All right, so that's two ways of calculating power for MCAT physics questions.